to another episode of Evolving Through Experience. Y'all know we got a special guest on. Like I said, all my guests are special, but we got my bro Chris Simmons in the building. Uh, what Chris up, Chris? The content king. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, bro. You gotta the, talk to me nice. Chris, Chris, the content king. <laughs> And we do, well, we will have his girl on, Zayla, the content queen. For sure. Yeah, but how you feeling, bro? I'm feeling great. Um, Getting to it, you know, just trying to get my hunger back and yeah. expand and scale. Okay, I like that. I, I'm glad you said your hunger back. What makes you feel like you lost it? Um, I feel like complacency sets in. So, like, if mm. you go from, like, I remember my last job making, like, $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Like, and then you have a dream of getting to, like, X amount. And then when you get there... Um, you just mm. get comfortable and then it's like you just gotta figure out like the next wins and the next level and you gotta yeah. realize that um the middle class is about the comfortable place that you could be mm -hmm. and that's where a lot of people die makes sense well I'm glad you started off like that I appreciate the transparency that's not even how I planned on starting it off but <laughs> hey look I love it bro cause this is evolving through experience so that's what we're here to talk about growth in every aspect mentally spiritually mostly physically and beyond so you really started off perfectly but before we continue you remember how we met right yeah okay how we met we met at a uh, networking event okay i want to speak about that because i think that's important um i wanted to bring that up just as obviously being in the right rooms but also having something to add in those right rooms if that makes sense so i know we met um i know we met at a networking event did you approach me or i approached you first i can't remember i, I approached y'all so you approached us okay yeah so what i do at networks events mm -hmm. i walk around i s scan and surveillance and everything like that mm -hmm. it was kind of like an older crowd and mm -hmm. whenever it's like an older crowd the first thing i do i look for the, the youngest people there mm -hmm. and then once i find the youngest people there i was like okay that means that they have a similar mind frame and a mm -hmm. similar a similar drive that i have because mm -hmm. they're here yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right, bet it was you and Darian. And yeah. then um, Keon actually knew a, a girl there named mm -hmm. Lauren. So we met Lauren first for mm -hmm. you. And mm -hmm. then she said she had a cleaning business. And mm -hmm. then when I spoke to you, then you was like, oh, I have an Airbnb. And I was like, all right, mm -hmm. bet I just met her. So then I was like, I just said, connected hey. the dots. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of how it is. Mm -hmm. And it's like a, I don't know how to describe it because it's like I don't approach everybody at yeah. a networking event. It's just like a vibe. I don't think you should. Get. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> It's just like a vibe. Mm -hmm. and I, I feel like I'm a good judgment of character. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you seem cool. Yeah. Or I just seem cool. <laughs> you seem or, cool? Nah, like, you you give me nah. weird vibes. No, no, no. I got you. Um, yeah. But I, with that being said, I know we connected even after that conversation just about the B&B. We started, I, I pretty much knew who you were because I always listened to EYL, obviously. So when you said Chris and then you said social media management, it kind of clicked because obviously they always saying your name on the episodes or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But when we first started speaking and we was connecting on IG, we was we found a similarity from there because I fast from social media. When I say fast, I limit it. Let's say that mm -hmm. I limit my social media time. So I locked it. So you have the same thing on your phone. So I just want to bring that in to social media. Even as even though you manage social media content for a lot of different people and brands, I just want to bring that in because I think People limiting themselves from social media, I think that's really helpful. And I want to speak about how does that help you as a person that obviously handles. It's a priority for you to be on social media. But at the same time, you understand the balance of needing to be off social media. Yeah, so <clears throat> the way I think a lot of people should approach life mm -hmm. is if you have a goal, you should look at everything outside of your goal as distractions. Everybody mm -hmm. is trying to get your attention. Everybody's trying to sell you something. So it's like a lot of stimulus is going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's like uh, those stimuluses on social media, playing games, doing those types of things. It, um, what's the word I want to use? It, uh, it messes up your nervous system mm -hmm. to make you feel like you're getting rewarded. But I want my dopamine to hit when I'm making money, when I'm being productive. Mm -hmm. So it's like, even with like the post and the likes and things like that, if I wasn't, uh, if I didn't have a social media management company, I would mm -hmm. not be on social media. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have a business, if I wasn't a business owner, if I wasn't generating revenue from it, I wouldn't be on it. Mm -hmm. Because it's the biggest time consuming. Like the iPhone is the most addictive uh, technology of all time. Mm -hmm. So that's why I limit it because I understand I need to focus. And I could just yeah. feel myself get like brain fog yep. when I'm on social media for more than an hour. Yeah. Even even from getting up, like, cause I, and I'm guilty of doing that before. Like I said, even like before you be I be scrolling. 
<laughs> nah, but I'm saying beforehand, <laughs> before I did, like, before I locked it, um, like, pretty much put a limit on it, I would catch myself beforehand. Even if I still know I'm going to be productive that day, like, the first thing I check out is social media. Like, cutting that out early in the morning, like, it's best to just avoid that until you actually fully wake up all the way around and get your, get, pretty much get your mind together. So with somebody that's not in that headspace or have yet to reach that, what advice could you give them to be like, look, stay away from social media for this amount of time or whatever. Like you said, obviously, even if it's not even from a business standpoint, or even if it is from a business standpoint, how could you help somebody pretty much give them game on how they can limit themselves from being distracted by social media on a daily basis? I set timers on it to remind mm-hmm. them about it, but um, I don't I don't mean to sound pessimistic, but at the mm-hmm. end of the day, it's either you do it or you don't. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's no motivational words that I can mm-hmm. ever say. Until you wake up one day and you realize you scrolled away four years of your life and now you're 25 <laughs> years, years old, crazy. 26 years old, you still haven't figured out your career mm-hmm. or a business that you wanted to start. And all of your peers are starting to push away and create space and create distance. Mm-hmm. You're still in the same spot in the same location that you was mm-hmm. five years prior. You're not going to stop. And then until uh, change hurts less than staying the same, you mm-hmm. will never change. That's how mm-hmm. I look at it. No, say less. Well, I want to go back to, I know you said um, at the beginning you was on a fast, so you didn't say it in here. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that, and then we'll go to, obviously, you was talking about um, you was working at your previous job or whatnot, how you started off, but let's start yeah. there first. Yeah, I'm on a fast right now, so yeah. two day nothing, and then the uh, the rest of the five days is going to be a great fast. Mm-hmm. Um, last time I was on a fast, I just felt like my senses clear up. Um mm-hmm. Also, whenever I work out and I'm, like, eating better, like, my great ideas come. Whenever mm-hmm. I'm in a situation where okay. I'm, I don't, what do I want to say, like, not working out consistently, whenever mm-hmm. I'm in a situation where I'm doing a lot of, like, degenerate low-level activities, mm-hmm. my great ideas don't come. My best ideas come from when I'm running, when I'm working out at the gym, mm-hmm. in those types of situations. So I'm trying to find that because... I'm prepping and I'm gearing up for Invest Fest. Yeah. So when I'm coming up with these product offerings and doing everything like that, I need to be like the Top highest tier. form. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm glad you said that. So that also, obviously, that would go in with you feeling like you somewhat lost your hunger, getting complacent to some degree. So you decided to do the fast. Or yeah. it goes hand in hand. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. So the way I look at myself, and I've noticed this since I was like younger, mm-hmm. and um, I was like always a kid where. I didn't need to, like, study and do all of that extracurricular stuff mm-hmm. to get, like, an A or a B on a test. Mm-hmm. And it created a habit inside of myself with not um, reaching my full capacity because my 40% capacity was good enough to pass and mm-hmm. be, like, considered exceptional. So I never had to take an extra step to try to be great. Mm-hmm. And, like, I felt like the biggest change I've ever had in my life is when I actually, like was focused and driven and it wasn't even for that long of a time period Mm -hmm. so now i'm thinking to myself what would i look like in 20 years if i was focused and driven and had one goal one mission what type of person would i want to be and it's like i realized i wasn't like a money motivated type of person like buying things doesn't motivate me Mm -hmm. but the idea of what i have to the type of person i have to become to become a hundred millionaire or a billionaire i want to know what type of work do i need to do to become that mm-hmm. and that's kind of like what drives me because mm-hmm. like i'm a um and I, and I also strive for freedom too mm-hmm. but like even once you get to you get to a point before a billion where you have freedom mm-hmm. so it's like what do you have after you reach that point point? and what is freedom too i think that's a conversation we could have because freedom is different for everybody what, what let me ask you what is freedom for you first can i can i curse or no yeah, curse, curse, but okay. keep it to a limit it. Because okay. I don't want people... It's, it's a sense of fuck you money. <laughs> like, okay. So it's mm-hmm. like, you. no matter what, it's like, mm-hmm. you have a, a, a boss, yeah. F you. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to move your car, F you. Like, yeah. it, it's a sense of, like, safety and security, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's like, um, it's only like a couple uh people, like, it's only three entrepreneurs mm-hmm. uh and i forgot what book i read about this but it's like a it's like freedompreneur so like their main goal their main driving force is freedom mm-hmm. that's like 90 percent of entrepreneurs mm-hmm. then it's other uh, entrepreneurs that they focus on mastering their craft mm-hmm. they're craftsmen and they care about like strictly being the best or the greatest at something mm-hmm. and that's what they care about the most and that's what drives them mm-hmm. so freedom drives them perfecting their craft drives them and the last one are the top performers the people who are like the 
Bill Gates, the the Elons and the Jeff Bezos. Mm -hmm. It is the the mountain climbers. They want to be the first to be something. They want to like get to the very top of the pinnacle of human existence. Mm -hmm. And that's why you could see like oh uh, just a regular man, just like everybody else. I want to colonize Mars. Mm -hmm. A freedompreneur doesn't do that. Uh, somebody who uh, wants to master the craft, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. So it's three. It's those types of three entrepreneurs, and I've okay. and I think I'm more so of a freedompreneur, mm -hmm. wanting to try to get to the pinnacle of climbing that mountaintop. Okay, and just before I continue, I, the reason I say yeah um, on you can curse because I just want I think this goes hand in hand with evolving. I feel like we shouldn't be limited ourselves on what we want to say mm -hmm. because at the end of the day. We it's we just nothing we can really sugarcoat. Like when you're talking about different conversations and you're talking about growth, it shouldn't be sugarcoated. Not saying I know people say, oh, you can use a different choice of words. Yeah, you could, but if that's the choice you want to use today, that's the choice you should use. So I I started off with people like trying to keep cursing to a limit. I don't think every single sentence have a have a curse word in it, but <laughs> in a sense of at the same time, who said cursing is bad? Yeah. Who who put the say, oh, now nah, you can't say that word, and then it's all the sugarcoating, and that's why people may not get. It. I think more people are going to hear and listen to what you got to say now that you said a curse word quote unquote but at the end of the day it's just a matter of look you that's how you want to express yourself so back to the freedom part the reason i asked that is because um i'm glad you gave that analogy and pretty much broke it down how you, um how you read it in the book but i feel like when i said freedom is a different point uh, obviously we know it's more than money it's more of a time thing i know you said it's the f you money but it's bigger than the bread it's more of like a, from a spiritual, mental, emotional place where you just like, you're in a place of peace, but at the same time, I think in order to have that peace, you do have to have a balance on money as well. I think it's a combination of the different things that bring you freedom. It's not like, oh, you just got all the time in the world, but then you ain't got no money. You need the time, you need the money, you need the peace mentally, emotionally, and the love around you. So I think it's a balance on all of it that really brings freedom, but it's no wrong answer. It's it, whatever works for everybody else. It, it matter what works for you. When you your definition of freedom is my definition of wealth. Mm -hmm. So, like, my definition of wealth is everything money Same. can't buy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, agree. Yep. So, like, yep. what do you have? Like, do your yep. kids love you? Mm -hmm. Do your kids want to spend time with you? Do your mm -hmm. parents love you? Mm -hmm. Are you healthy? Mm -hmm. It's like it's like things that I, I judge somebody when they say I'm wealthy by the things that money cannot buy. Correct. Agreed. So, it's like when I think about freedom, though, mm -hmm. I think about being able to be free. So mm -hmm. it's like majority of people who have businesses and the majority of like business owners, they're not free. Mm -hmm. Like majority of times we just make a higher paying job for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And even the people who don't make a higher paying job for themselves, the more money you make, the less, the more restricted you have. Mm -hmm. And then you got to get to a point where like, that's where the FU money comes in. Mm -hmm. It's like when you currently have a company and you're a, a CEO of a Fortune 500 company and you're a founder, right? You're still on the board. Mm -hmm. It's certain things that you can and can't say. It's certain mm -hmm. things you can and you can't do. You can't say or do those things until you sell your company. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so agreed. that's what I mean when I say, like, I'm talking about, like, mm -hmm. you didn't have a $200 million exit. Now mm -hmm. you can start a media company and talk about anything you want to. Yeah, agree. Because okay. you can't be silenced. Yeah. You can't be canceled. Okay, makes sense. I I'm glad you said that. So now I want to just transition a little bit into evolving from your life so give me an example obviously i know some things but whatever you feel comfortable talking about on like a main thing in experience in your life that pretty much has affected you for the better and made you grow to the person you are today but also to the person you are going to be um i probably say it's four pivotal changes mm -hmm. that happen in my life okay. um and the way that i look at like pain trauma and things like that mm -hmm. especially for like men it's opportunity to be greater and be better mm -hmm. um i look at like people as like a plate right mm -hmm. when you let's say you drop a glass plate and it breaks mm -hmm. it will never be the same but you could put it back together mm -hmm. or you could possibly make it back stronger depending on the person that it is because at the end of the day trauma is what like fuels and drives us and i feel like every man on some level needs trauma to fuel us and i think that we need to learn how to channel that but i'll mm -hmm. probably say um well, what it was i'll probably say ninth no, no it was a ninth grade it was 10th grade 10th grade first my brother, he got shot. He got paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And um, what it was? Uh, 10th grade. Then it was 2019. He was sentenced to 55 years. And he did beat the paralyzation, though? Yeah, no, okay, no. He okay. started to walk. And as soon okay. as he started to walk I'm glad again, you said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, then he got yeah. sentenced. Uh, he got, well, he got uh, arrested. Yeah. And, then he, and then in 2019, he got sentenced. Mm -hmm. Um. My best friend, he got killed when it was 2020, like mm -hmm. August 2020, like mm -hmm. right before his 21st birthday. 
and mm. my uh, one of my closest friends' brother, he had a heart condition that nobody knew about, mm. and he'll always like have like little like things, and they used to tell him like he was dehydrated, mm -hmm. but it's like one time like the doctor checked him and then his like potassium level was mm -hmm. higher but they didn't necessarily like say anything about yeah. it and he ended up like suddenly passing away mm -hmm. but during the time period it was during like the pandemic covid mm -hmm. so they labeled it as covid no they didn't label it as covid it just took seven months for the autopsy to get back so this whole time period their family didn't know what happened mm -hmm. and so now picture like you're <laughs> Like nobody knows mm -hmm. how you passed away. Yeah. Now it's a whole bunch of bullshit rumors and mm -hmm. everything. Like, oh, it's suicide. Like, no, it wasn't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like those three pivotal things each changed me to mm -hmm. be like, I don't know. It's like I'm the type of person where I take accountability for everything, mm -hmm. yeah. good or bad. And I feel yeah. like, um, in certain situations, I feel like if I did this, I would have been there. And it's like I feel like nobody will understand. Like, if somebody passed away close to you and you feel like you could have prevented their death, mm -hmm. you, then you'll understand what I'm saying. Yeah, no, nah, I understand. And that's yeah. how I look at it. I feel like mm -hmm. I'm the type of person I shoulder that type of yeah. pain and burden. And then, like, I'm just now recently in 2023 realizing that it's like... It's not your fault. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd probably say 2022 is when mm -hmm. I had, like, the realization. But 2023, I'm getting to the point where it's like... um, I just need to realize that and this may sound weird it's like a lot of people they they think that their memory is to make them remember the past mm -hmm. but that's not what memory is for and most people use memory for the wrong reason like mm -hmm. they think about stuff and then they just keep thinking about it and it's like a constant never-ending cycle of just re-traumatizing themselves and that's mm -hmm. not what memory is for memory is for not making the same mistake twice and just being able to like but you're not supposed to recall and live in the past you're supposed to live in the present mm -hmm. not even the future you're supposed to like live in like the now mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so it's just really more so getting into that and yeah. trying to use my memory because i have a, like a i have a great memory so mm -hmm. i can remember all of the great things ever to happen mm -hmm. and i can also remember all of the super bad things yeah and, I don't, I've never did any drugs or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So whenever I've been through anything, I've coped with it a hundred percent myself. Yeah. So I think that's what made me like mentally strong to get mm -hmm. through it. And like those experiences motivated me. Like when you have stuff like that happen to you when you're mm -hmm. like an adolescent and like early adult, mm -hmm. me working 12, 15 hours ain't shit. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, bro, me like cold calling or me mm -hmm. walking up to a stranger Asking like, hey, do you want like I? That's why I'm. I th think that's why I'm fearless mm -hmm. because I've done with I. I've already had enough bullshit happen in mm -hmm. real life to the point where it's like this business world is easy. Mm -hmm. It's literally no stakes. It's either I be broke or I get rich. Mm -hmm. The risk of reward is crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I think that like it just made me like look at life and realize that mm -hmm. you only literally live once, and when somebody's gone, they'll never be able to come back, mm -hmm. and you never want to live with regret. So mm -hmm. it made me like really just lock in and like play with uh house money if you yeah. will say so now i'm glad you said that again because just to go back a little bit like you said the accountability i think like you said I, I, and this is what i'm sure you agree with this too but all men really everybody but for the sense of men we have to take a different level of accountability and i'm glad you said that because I, we spoke about that before of taking too much accountability like you said good or bad my fault or not my fault is still some level of my accountability if i'm involved in it participated in it, any capacity it's still some level of accountability there but like i said i also think to some degree now you are you obviously said you evolved and you are evolving to the point where it's like now you're in a place where you understand that's not your fault but i think having those experiences is the part where most growth happened like where you need to sometimes take over accountability if that makes sense yeah it's a fine delicate between taking mm -hmm. complete control of accountability in your mm -hmm. life and then having and checking your ego because mm -hmm. why do you feel like you're important enough to affect this mm -hmm. and it's like so I'm getting to the point where I'm just humbling myself. And mm -hmm. it's like sometimes where it's like, like I'm a naturally very controlling person, mm -hmm. but it comes from a good place of heart mm -hmm. because I'm the type of person I want to control every environment. So everybody I love will always be straight. Mm -hmm. So that is a very great motivating mm -hmm. factor for why I do a lot of the things that I do. Cause mm -hmm. I want to be able to like, let's say if I had a close friend, right. Mm -hmm. And 
they were um, like, damn, I, I need a house. I can't get approved for some shit. I mm-hmm. want to be able to have so much money that it doesn't even matter if they pay me back. Mm-hmm. I just want to be making sure that everybody I love mm-hmm. is cared for and doing all that type of things. And that's where it's like, it's an ego thing, right? Yeah. Because it's like, all right, like, why do you think you you, you should be able to dictate everybody? Like, yeah. So it's like, it's a very hard thing. And it's like, it's, mm-hmm. sometimes it can be overbearing, but it Correct. comes from a good space. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because even right now I'm, I'm reading about that too. Um, and I, I, like you said, it comes from a great space, but like you said, everybody you love, but then at what point do you realize you're spreading yourself thin and it's just like, does this even bring you peace anymore? Like you doing this for everybody, but at the end of the day, cause you love them, but are you losing love for yourself and doing this at the same time? Because you're spreading yourself so thin, trying to make sure everybody else straight, but it's like, you kind of somewhat at that point to some degree you start could possibly losing yourself in a sense of like trying to make sure everybody else straight but it's like what about your own peace of mind i'll probably say for me personally Mm -hmm. i don't think i I don't think it's that route i think Mm -hmm. it's more so that it's a trauma response because Mm -hmm. when i was young i felt like i had no control over anything and now i'm older Mm -hmm. i want control over everything Mm -hmm. that's really what it is yeah that's how i look at it so it's like um and i know we had a conversation it's like Sometimes you need to just you, like you anything that can fuel you, you need to use it, good mm-hmm. or bad. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the the ends to me justifies the means sometimes, mm-hmm. right? So it's like if it's gonna make me productive, why not? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I understand it can't be overbearing. So it's like Zayla does a great job with letting me know when mm-hmm. it's too much because she's t- like I have people in, in my life that could check me, and she's mm-hmm. the biggest person who could check me because mm-hmm. she knows me more than anybody else. And when she checked me, I understand that she understands, like, nah, I'm tripping. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I got to, like, even if I'm doing something, like, all right, like, you just need that. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's another reason. Like, that's my advantage. Yeah. I realized early on that I didn't want to play a field. I wanted somebody because that's not a life that I wanted. Mm-hmm. I wanted somebody because I actually wanted to build something. I wanted to build something I never had before. Mm-hmm. And I realized the best way to do that is to start a family, mm-hmm. a black family of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> donation. <laughs> I was about to say Dr. Uma. <laughs> donations. Donations. Nah. So now nah, I'm glad you said that because I wanted I was going to transition to Zayla a little later, but I'm glad you said that. So first, how did you meet Zayla? Cause I want to talk about this. I'm glad you brought this up now. But how did you meet Zayla? Uh so what happened was um her friend um was talking to my friend. So mm-hmm. She had came over her house because she was spending uh spending a night at her house. So what you saying? You was dating a friend? Nah, I'm joking. Nah, <laughs> I'm joking. Nah. Go ahead. Nah. nah. So yeah. So she came over and then like when she came over, like she kind of was like you know like it, like it's like standoffish. Like cause yeah. she they were supposed to go to the movies. She ended up mm-hmm. going there. Mm-hmm. Like we're young at the time, mm-hmm. like 16, 17, right? Mm-hmm. High so, school. Okay. Yeah, high school. And then um. We were just like we just started like making conversation mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, I did some childish things. I just like, <laughs> but nah, like yeah, no. Nah, we just started to speak, and then afterwards, yeah. um, she stayed kind of like forty five minutes away. She stayed in like Jonesboro. I stayed mm-hmm. in South Fulton. So it wasn't like a, um when we first started to s- s- talk with each other, we just had to text and Facetime each other. Mm-hmm. So like the first for the first time I met her, the next time I saw her was I met her in January. The next time I saw her was in April. Mm-hmm. And then from April, the next time I saw her was like in August, September. So mm-hmm. it was like those huge time Spread periods it. where Spread we just it. had to talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Like no physical, no hugging, no kissing. So we mm-hmm. had to actually build like a genuine bond. Mm-hmm. And um, and I just learned this from, uh, I want to say, Julian mm-hmm. uh, uh, event when he was like, it takes... Mm-hmm. 50 hours. To Nin- be it was 90. 90 I remember 90, 90, 90 hours. Quality. To, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 90 hours of yeah, quality time to yeah. be a friend. So it's like, bro, picture you speaking to somebody every single day mm-hmm. for six months straight without having to physically see them or touch them. Mm-hmm. So it's no lust with it. Mm-hmm. Literally just speaking, communicating. One day we just had like a like a heart to heart. I think we were trauma dumping on each other. Actually, mm-hmm. that's what really happened. Mm-hmm. And then so trauma it, dumping brings relationships. Yeah, yeah. Or, okay, they yeah, don't so run with that one. And <laughs> we just was like trauma. Like I go yeah, lie, at yeah. first, I think it was like initially a trauma bond. She mm-hmm. told me the worst parts about her life. I was her the worst parts about my life. But this is like seven months in. Yeah. And then from there, she was going through a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. and I just felt like I wanted to help her as much mm-hmm. as I could, and I did. And she helped me as much as she could, and that's how. And that help came from a mental and spiritual uh, aspect. 
in a sense of like pretty much giving you advice wise or like what what her helping me or me helping yeah, her? Yeah, pretty much both ways though. Both ways. I put up some money. Oh, put you put money, it was yeah. okay. So I did everything. Okay, <laughs> I now, did everything. I'm glad you said that. I wanted to ask that because I know I think that's also could be men downfall, like trying to help everybody. Like obviously, it's it's a lot of great black women in the world, great women in the world. So it's like. Us men trying to save every single one, I think that could be a downfall. Obviously, that's, that wasn't your case, but just in a sense of when you said you was helping her, I think putting it like it, it's being um, like pretty much saying what it was, how I think that that was helpful. Yeah, she didn't get a gift for the first year we dated. She didn't get gifts. She, we we, we oh. went with 50 50. Oh, the 50 50 boy. Everything 50 50 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 boy. <laughs> so it's but like nah, 50, so okay, boy, so, yeah. so this is how she was, right? So she mm -hmm. had like issues with her dad at the time period. Mm -hmm. Not gonna get into it. Yeah, They're yeah, good course. now. Yeah. But she had a niggas ain't shit mentality. Mm -hmm. Like all men are gonna treat me bad. Da, mm -hmm. da, 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 at the end of the day. So it was like she was like one of those types of people because mm -hmm. of the way that she was raised and condition who was raising her in the household, right? Mm -hmm. So what happened was she would feel like her individuality would be her paying for her own stuff. Mm. So she was more so like paying for all stuff. Like, I don't need you to have this because mm. I don't want you to ever say like hold, hold up, up head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Makes sense. So I saw that she had that mentality, mm. right? So it's like as a as a man, mm -hmm. you you want to help somebody when you see that they don't want you because of the perceived money you had. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And mind you, at the time period. At that time period, I felt like I had money, but I was broke as hell. Yeah. I, was, I was 17 years old, 18 mm -hmm. years old. I had a job, but it, like majority of people, they weren't making as much money as I was at my age, but in mm -hmm. the grand scheme of things, I was broke as hell. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it wasn't like, it wasn't nothing like for me to go over there. And then like once I had to learn how to drive and everything, mm -hmm. I started going over there more and seeing her more and more and more. And then I started to actually like buy her stuff and things mm -hmm. like that. But she was with me for a year before I, I ever buy anything. Mm. So I knew that it wasn't like no like yeah you know what I'm saying it's like it was, type she actually like liked we, you. Yeah, yeah we had a bond Makes and then sense. from there it's like one thing about a man and I know you want I just want to say don't buy them nothing for a whole year like Chris did oh yeah <laughs> but now one thing I will say is like um bro when we buy a gift for a woman we just mm -hmm. want them to appreciate it mm -hmm. like no matter what it is like one thing about her what I will say is. No matter what I get her, mm -hmm. she's gonna appreciate it. Mm -hmm. She's gonna genuinely like you cared enough to mm -hmm. get me this. Mm -hmm. And at first, when we first got in a relationship, the 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 bar was so low because she never really had anybody mm -hmm. who gave her stuff. Like like a lot of us mm -hmm. didn't even like when it came down to Christmas time. Like you know like type people that like I'm not waking up for Christmas mm -hmm. because if I go on Instagram and I see everybody else get a gift and I don't mm -hmm. have a gift, like it make people feel some type of way alienated, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's like. That's how it was. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, like, I started to give her the types of things and give her the experiences that she never had. Mm -hmm. Like, I put us on the first flight going mm -hmm. to L.A. That's the first time she ever got on a plane. Word. That's the first time I ever got on a plane. We did a lot of first things. You know what I'm saying? Together, yeah. Yeah, so, That's like, lot, yeah. I taught like I taught her how to do this. I helped build her credit. I taught her to get mm -hmm. the, Like, I'm talking about, like, real foundational pieces. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about just more so just, like, on, like, Oh, I love you. I want to yeah, do this. Yeah. You know, like not less. I'm talking about yeah. really actually building you to be mm -hmm. the person that you want to be. Because you tell me this person that you want to be, mm -hmm. my job is to show you all of the steps to do it and mm -hmm. let you make that decision. Yeah. But any resource you need, I'll be able to help you with it. Mm -hmm. And then as I go on my journey. So now, so with that being said, what is one way, not even just for men in general, but let's start this first. What was a vital experience that you and her had that made you realize, yeah, like this is the one. And then on top of that, what were some of the char characteristics that she's has helped you grown into as a man you are today? One moment that she was the one. Yeah. One experience or moment when you realized, yo, like Zayla's the one for me. I know there's several of them because I know we spoke in the past, but just one you willing to share. You want a funny one or a serious one? I want give us both. All right, so we was in Panama, right? Uh -huh. It was 2018 uh, spring break, mm -hmm. so we was in Panama, mm -hmm. and in Panama, uh, you know they racist. I'm just saying they're not racist, but they're lucky racist. <laughs> so they gave us wristbands for like on um, the beat and um, 
what is it? They give us wristbands to be in hotels. Mm -hmm. So in and out. Okay. So people don't come over, right? Mm -hmm. So some shit happened where like the like uh the pol the police came to our um room and they had to check us and if they found somebody who wasn't supposed to be there mm -hmm. who was gonna get kicked out of the hotel. Zayla was there. Mm -hmm. Um everybody else had a, a wristband. Except for her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she was in there, right? So mm -hmm. it was like a it was like a um a circle. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> like let's say you walk in, it's a doorway and it's a it's a um a room on your left. And then the room mm -hmm. goes into a bathroom and then the mm -hmm. bathroom goes into the hall. Mm -hmm. So this nigga walks in and the starts cop. to check. Yeah, he uh -huh. checks the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Zayla is in the bathroom. As he opening the door to the bathroom, she's leaving the door to go to the bedroom. As he goes to the bedroom, she leaves the coat and then she runs out. <laughs> Word. All my followers like, oh, she a rider. She a rider. <laughs> but Word. yeah, like, yeah. So like, if she didn't do that, we would have got kicked out. That's okay. the funny part. Uh, a serious note. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was just one singular moment. Mm -hmm. I would say it was to the point where I felt comfortable telling her everything. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like with me, it's like I'm a very hard person to actually like open up and be emotional mm -hmm. with. So like, bro, she's been with me since 2017, right? Mm -hmm. To now. So everything that ever is bad happened, mm -hmm. anytime I ever felt inadequate, anytime I ever oh like beat myself up too much, mm -hmm. she's always there. Mm -hmm. No matter if I was... Like, my up seasons, my down seasons, mm -hmm. when stuff happened with family, like, she's always been there. So I think it was, like, an accumulation between those. Like, mm -hmm. um, you've showed me at every obstacle that you're going to be here, no matter what. No matter if we're, if we're li like, if we're living in, in, the one, in a room mm -hmm. together, with, if she doesn't have, no, like, no matter where we are, she's always been there. Like, I don't know how to just like it's just like an accumulation of years mm -hmm. being with somebody for six years. Yeah. One day I was just like, oh yeah, she's going. No, that's what's up, bro. I'm glad you said that because I I wanted that's the why I wanted to act so people because see obviously everybody route is different on how they how they meet their their girl their wife or whatever. But I'm glad you said that. Just obviously outside of just giving her her flowers, but so people know like these are the characteristics. So let's say if you had to answer for her now, what were the things that you well. Obviously, you already said it to some degree, but what was like one of the main pivotal things where you pretty much helped her grow and seeing her characteristics? Obviously, outside of, you know, you said the bar was low and you pretty much showed her like it was genuine, obviously. But what were outside of that, like main things that made her realize like for you that you was it like? I would try to build stuff that would not benefit me for, for her. her. Mm. So like she had a business, I would help her every day in her business. Mm hmm. Before I ever had anything, mm -hmm. I would take her to different places where she needed to go mm -hmm. that had no benefit towards me. Mm -hmm. um, I would tell her to, to patch her relationships that had no benefit benefits towards, you. towards me. Because mm -hmm. I realized that she wants to be the best version of herself, so I'm going to be there to make sure she is. Mm. I never tried to change her. I only mm -hmm. tried to make her better. Only, but that is some some degree that's changing. It's but not for the changing. Better. It's not changing because I'm not changing her core person. Mm -hmm. If she says she wants to be a more disciplined disciplined person, mm -hmm. I'm going to try to figure out and help her become more disciplined. Mm -hmm. But at the, at the same time, I realized that sometimes people just need to make a click by themselves, mm -hmm. and that's why, I, like earlier, when I said what I said, I was like, when people, when change is easier than staying the same, that's mm -hmm. when people change. Yeah. Majority of the time, people don't change, and. It's just as being there, like her support system. Like she's never did nothing crazy, but like besides running from the cops. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she, she never keep did running, nothing. Zayla. Keep running. She never did nothing <laughs> crazy, but I mm -hmm. will say it's like we both give each other grace to mm -hmm. not be perfect. Like I don't look at each. We don't look at each other to be perfect, and like and she. To me, it felt like she always felt like she had to put up this, like, facade. And it's not like she's, like, a fake person. Mm -hmm. But she always felt like she had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I I'm, I didn't let her. I let her be herself. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Like, I let her actually, like, speak her mind. Yeah. Because before I was with her, she was very easy to get taken advantage of. 
very reserved, not going to say anything. Like, mm-hmm. she's going to let anybody like, walk over her, mm-hmm. family, friends, everybody. Mm-hmm. I, I empowered her voice. I didn't mm-hmm. tell her to, what to say. Mm-hmm. I just learned how to communicate, like, like, bro, you don't have to take that. Mm-hmm. You know you don't. Like, the type of personality she has, she's a very agreeable, very open, creative person. Mm-hmm. They're, they t- they're the type of people to, to get taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're also the type of person to grow resentment. Mm-hmm. So the biggest thing with her is always not to grow resentment for wanting to say things but not saying them. Mm-hmm. So I just learned her, like, personality type. I learned how she is and everything about her. And I just mm-hmm. try to put the best things that I may think are good or she may think that's good. Mm-hmm. But also I give her opportunities to fail too. Yeah, bro. I, I want to give you your flowers, bro. I, oh, I, I I know I give it to you all the time. I know for like when we first started linking up, but just on on record, I want to give you your flowers. Not just for that, because I I learn I learn from you too. I know we disagree on stuff as well. Yeah, cause um, you cause you my woke, woke partner. You yeah, my woke partner. We disagree on a lot of things, partner. but it's still a matter of growth <laughs> and productivity between it all, and I think that's healthy. So hearing you speak more about Zayla outside of that, just overall from our conversations, like. I just want to give you your flowers for that. What does evolving through experience mean to you? And obviously, we know it's no wrong answer to that. You talk, well, actually, the last time you told me was my answer was wrong. Okay, well, say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Evolving oh, I do remember my fault. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, go ahead. Let's let's hear. It. Let's talk about evolving through experience <laughs> means to me. I feel like <laughs> um, using your trauma to fuel you. Um, and mm-hmm. last time, the reason he disagreed with me is because he said it doesn't always have to be trauma. But it's like to me, uh, like it's levels to try. A, a failure to me is the best opportunity because, like, let's say if you're a coach, right? Mm-hmm. If you win every game, you're not going to be able to coach your players because they're winning. So, mm-hmm. like, and I'll give you this example, right? Mm-hmm. I think LeBron is the goat, right? Mm-hmm. The reason I think LeBron is the goat is because he lost in 2011. The reason I say he's the goat because he lost in 2011. It may sound crazy to most mm-hmm. people who are Jordan fans who say. Oh, he lost in 2011. That means he could never be the GOAT. Mm-hmm. No. He lost in 2011. In that offseason, he had to become a different breed. Like, when you're that great, he doesn't never have to show his 100% mm-hmm. full capacity because he's so good that he doesn't have to do it. And mm-hmm. I'll give you another example. Mm-hmm. You remember when Kevin Love and Kyrie got hurt? Mm-hmm. And Bron averaged like 38, 12, and 10 in the finals against Golden State? Mm-hmm. He would never, you will never see that LeBron again because he never will never be in that situation to the point where you have to do that again. And I feel like when you evolve through experiences, it's like those negative experiences mm-hmm. are really what charges you because mm-hmm. they teach you the most lessons. You can't learn much about certain things. It, well, it, certain things are different, but you can't learn much about business if you're only succeeding in business because mm-hmm. you're not failing. Yeah, agree. So, yeah, from that standpoint, I understand what you're saying. When I was saying trauma, like, it's levels to trauma, and trauma could be different things. Failure is not necessarily a trauma. Like, this is, say, a boxer, right? You, you, let's just say. Trauma gets your head knocked down. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's one example. But let's just say you been you learn about, and you get hit, like, with some, with some shit one day. Not necessarily meaning that's a trauma. It may be a failure you learned, but that's not necessarily a trauma. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense? Men need like, trauma, though. I, I believe in it. All I, yeah, but not trauma. everything has to be trauma, though. When you no, say, I, I feel failure trauma. and trauma. Yeah, I'm not saying everything has, doesn't have to be trauma, though, bro. Men but, need trauma. But, okay, I'm not knocking and that. I'm saying everything doesn't have to be trauma. Does that make sense? I get what you're saying. Okay, okay. I just I'm not saying me. women don't need trauma, though. Okay. They will break. Okay. Hey. I'm going to get you canceled. <laughs> yeah, he, Chris is, <laughs> he's wants a to ma- say anything he's to get a massage <laughs> He's going to get canceled one day. I hope not, but I'll be there, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you know if he was so wrong. I got fuck you, man. I don't nah. care if I get canceled. Okay. It, it, it's levels to it. Uh, I mean, it is. Hopefully, I could just partner with some institutions that have my back and, and, and the matrix hey, come for me. If, if it makes sense for them, they will. <laughs> Shoot. You know how that go. But nah, so let's just transition to... um. I know, obviously, your story, too, from transitioning from uh, working at Amazon, you said, right? You was driving at Amazon? But you, you want my full back story? Go ahead, bro. Let's do all it. Right, what what sure. we here for? Villain origin story. <laughs> all ahead. right, nah, so, all right, so uh, 2016, I got my mm-hmm. first job. I mm-hmm. worked at Six Flags. Um, mm-hmm. And from 2016 to 2017, mm-hmm. I got promoted. And then I, I was, like, one of the youngest supervisors. And then I was, like, 17. 
mm-hmm. managing like a little a, like a couple locations. Mm-hmm. And then I got to the point where I was managing like I want to say like fifty to sixty people, mm-hmm. and it was like seven, six, six or seven locations, mm-hmm. give or take. Like during like the hiring process, ordering, mm-hmm. like supervising supervisors and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I was there for a while. Actually, I the only real real reason why I stopped working at Six Flags was because of COVID. Actually, it was actually COVID was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Uh, but, facts. <laughs> yeah, so I graduated. Uh, I graduated uh, high school in 2018, and I went to college. When I went mm-hmm. to college, uh, college was cool, but I felt like it was a scam. Um, I mean, it is. I stayed downtown. You know what you want to do? I'm about to tell you why it was a scam. Mm-hmm. I stayed downtown, right? So when I stayed downtown, I think my rent was like nine something a month. He was living. It wasn't a campus property. It was a. It was a. It was. A it dorm? was a dorm. No, okay. it wasn't a dorm, but it was mm-hmm. a student apartment. Student. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. So it's, it's cheap. Okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. It was like so. It was like nine hundred per room. Makes sense. So me and my friend stayed with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we stayed with each other. Um, at one twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was going to school, and like I only was going to school because my folks wanted me to go to school, mm-hmm. and I realized majority of people that only was going to school because their folks wanted them to go to school. Nobody had a real vision where it was like, I wanted to do this. Mm-hmm. Like, their mom told them that they would be a good doctor when they were six, and then they went to school to be a doctor. Um, and I think that that's the saddest existence that you could live. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, um, it may not be this year. It may not be when you're 20 or 30 or 40. But eventually, if you went to a career that you did not want to go to just to strictly make money, like, I mean, that's fine and all, but eventually you're going to get tired of the career. Mm-hmm. You're going to actually want to f- do what you want to do. Yeah. Passion, so yeah. yeah, I started looking for, like, different stuff to do like, when I was there. And I had actually I had got uh, into a car accident. I actually got hit by the police. So if anybody ever been hit by the police? I don't you know, got that check. Nah, you know, black people, every time somebody get hurt, it's you like you of, got that. I nah. have a question. You think what? the police officer <laughs> who, when the police officer came to give us the the ticket or whatever mm-hmm. he dapped the man up. You think he was getting the ticket? Well, you said when he when the, per- like as, the as person like the person who came. Yeah, but the person who hit me was the, a police officer. Uh huh. The oh, officer oh, it wasn't who like came. A, a cop car at the time. You no, say. it was a cop car. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then the officer who that came, came. Oh, to no, tell for you sure not. who's who you think get the ticket? Of course, you gonna get the ticket. The, I, you talking I about know. getting the check? What, what check? <laughs> I'm just saying what it was check? a joke because you know every time something like I, that. I know yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah. about. I'm, no, I'm saying no. Yeah, that that yeah, works yeah. when it's not the police. So yeah. I got hit by the police officer, and I got to. I had, actually know it's crazy. You ain't had no lawyers then, huh? Because I would have tried to. But I got to two car accidents in a less than 24 hour period. It's crazy. My life was, I felt like my life was at an abyss, right? Mm-hmm. I just, That's tough. So mind you, this is funny. Uh, I had an apartment. Mm-hmm. I, had a, I had a truck. I had a big ass truck. It was mm-hmm. a Suburban. Two car accidents, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a full-time student. I had six classes. Mm-hmm. I went to school at 8 a.m. I left school at 5. My last class was at 5. But I only went to school Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? Okay, makes I sense. Worked, yeah. I worked at six flags. I worked at the Mercedes Benz Stadium and I worked at Papa John's at 18 years old. Mm-hmm. I had three jobs. At the same time, yeah, yeah. Going to school full time. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, this shit, hey, someone got to give. Yeah. So I needed to go get another car. I needed to get a car. Mm-hmm. So that was my motivation. I always mm-hmm. only get a car. So I was like, I'm going to start a clothing brand. I used to sell candy back in school. I used mm-hmm. to make like, uh, like in middle school, I used to make $50 a day selling candy. Mm-hmm. Um, So I was like, I, I want to sell something. So I, I started a clothing mm-hmm. brand, right? So when I started a clothing brand, uh, the first weekend I launched it, I made $800, I think. $800, mm-hmm. $900, right? So I was like, this is cool. Mm-hmm. Then I paid your rent. And guess what happened? <laughs> Back at zero. Oh, no. I was at worse than zero because I had yeah. to re-up. Yeah, true. So once you have to re-up, so it's like, that's why. I, the reason I'm in a service-based business now is because I hate products. Because okay. with products is you have overhead you have to worry about sitting on inventory. You have to worry about getting the right size, the right colors, and all that type of shit. You have to worry about asking singular people, trying to sell them bitches hand to hand on people on Instagram. And I made, what, $900, but half of that got to go up to rehab. Mm-hmm. And then you don't even really know the margins back then, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, um, I was like, if I ever start a business again, mm-hmm. it's going to be a service based business. But well, when you start, yeah. this is 2019. When this mm-hmm. happened. Well, it was 2018, mm-hmm. going into 2019. Um, so I stopped doing that. 
Um, actually, I ended up having to move back in with my parents mm -hmm. because they convinced me that it would be smarter instead of paying $900 for that to just get a car and then just to go to school from mm -hmm. home. And then when, like, I don't know if anybody ever moved out of their parents' house and then moved back in. They feel like they got you where they want you. It's like mm -hmm. a manipulation thing, the control tactic that just starts mm -hmm. to happen. Like, oh, you tried to leave and you had to come back. So it's like. Yeah, I could see that with some people. I, I, I know we, some people that could relate. Yeah. Yeah. And my folks, like, they wasn't, like, overbearing to the point where it's like I couldn't leave and come as I wanted to. Yeah, and I don't think it's intentional, but yeah, you don't yeah, see yeah. how it could come off. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm past the, 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 the part where I demonize my parents. Mm -hmm. I'm in a humanizing phase. I, mm -hmm. I tell you yeah, about that. I know. We talked. Three, yeah. three stages. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, nah. So, yeah. So I moved back in, right? And then like, I just didn't like it because it's like I just went from having my own stuff, own freedom, mm -hmm. being what I consider a man, and now I'm back under this rule mm -hmm. and I didn't like it and then I was going to school then we were going like me and my dad would go back and forth because he wanted me to stay in school to become a physical therapist I didn't want to do it mm -hmm. I just was doing it just cause mm -hmm. and then I got like, I was just trying to figure out different shit yeah. any way to make money I got my insurance adjuster license mm -hmm. I dropped out of school I had I, I was trying to get deployed to do catastrophic work Deployed uh, as in the military? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, independent assurance adjuster. Oh, okay. I, I know what you mean. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to do anything yeah. to leave school, bro. He ain't like none of that shit. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I dropped out of school. Yeah. Then he'll just always be like, so what you going to do? What you going to do? He's always, like, his biggest thing was he just felt like he'll never be able to give me, like, money or a handout. The only thing he could do is provide a roof over my head and just... Figure the rest out. Not make me pay rent, and he just wants me to be successful. But he was like the time, like he he's similar to me, like when it mm -hmm. comes down to like control. Yeah. So he thinks that his way is the best way, and we both have strong personalities. Mm -hmm. So it's like I know that my way is better than your way, mm -hmm. but you may be right because you're only looking at it as a For one year, year period. Yeah. Like it's not like a year. I'm a bad <laughs>